A dead baby discovered in a dumpster leaves a neighborhood in shock. Now police are trying to figure out what happened. Good morning, everybody. I am RJ Smith, and this is Crazy News Reacts, where I take the days, weeks, months, trending stories, and I add my own juice to it. Yeah, that's right. Let's get going and see what we have. A heartbreaking discovery in a construction dumpster Monday in Hollywood. The 911 call alerting police that roofers found an infant's body in a shopping bag. Baby in a shopping bag, in a dumpster. It's a tough one, right? Because our country is stepping down on women like never before, okay? With this Roe v. Wade being overturned, we are going to be seeing a lot more of this because kids who are pregnant and want to have an abortion are being refused. And that's going to lead to a lot more of these incidents, plus a boom in children's and families. There are going to be so many children that have been discarded by their parents because of these draconian abortion laws. So let's see what the hell I'm talking about. My crew arrived to the site to start the day, and I guess they realized when they were going to throw debris into the dumpster that they, found, they see the uh, child inside. The mother becomes pregnant. She determines she just doesn't want the child, whether that because whether that is due to inequality, income inequality, um, not being able to afford a child, or just being too young and you don't want one. Is this what we are becoming? Dumping children in dumpsters, trash cans, and in some cases, suffocating them by putting them in plastic bags. Detectives are trying to find out where the baby came from and the circumstances around its death. How old was the child approximately? Uh, I couldn't tell you. They're not sure if it's a boy or a girl. They said a little child. Imagine walking up to a dumpster to throw garbage away and hearing a baby's cry down amongst the discarded food and diapers and junk. And there is a better way here in Florida. They are allowed to take their babies with no questions asked to the local fire department. And at that point, they will take custody of the child and there will be no questions asked. So that is one way that they are dealing with this whole abortion thing. If you don't want a baby, you're supposed to drop it off. Me, as a kid who was orphaned, can tell you, man, we're gonna create a lot of problems with these abortion laws that have come out. They're so draconian. Bring the baby safely to a fire station and give it to a firefighter. Um, that's, that's if they feel like that's what they have to do. More importantly, we'd like them to pick up the phone, call the hotline and say, I need help. The problem is a little bigger than this, folks, because you have young people, okay? And when you're dealing with young people, for whatever reasons, they don't want their parents to know their sisters and brothers. Maybe they're embarrassed by it. And they just don't think through the steps. Is it 100% preventable? I don't see how that is. Is murder preventable? No, of course not. To the crime of abuse of a child resulting in great bodily harm and first degree felony. I sent you to 18 years followed by two years parole. A teenager, a young girl, facing the criminal justice system because she just didn't know what to do and disposed of the body. It doesn't even have to be an alive baby because they're going to argue that it was alive when you did it anyway. That's, <laughs> look, cops aren't there to help you, right? Unless it's an emergency, but cops are there for people like this to lock them up into judges to give this girl 18 years. I mean, it's just grotesque to me anyway. New Mexico judge actually reduced Alexa Zavila's sentence from there for time served since, since her arrest. She will now still serve 16 years for child abuse and attempted murder. I obviously do not agree with this, folks. Not even in the slightest. Give someone this type of prison time or something like this. There are guys and girls in prison 
who have committed rapes, robberies, murders, kidnapping, drug trafficking that don't get this kind of time. So if you want to lock up mothers who make these horrible mistakes and bad decisions, maybe you should review your criminal code and take a look at the people who really deserve this kind of time. That Avila showed no remorse for her actions until that guilty verdict. Your Honor, what we see here is a pattern of someone who not only is not showing remorse, but someone who, in fact, takes deliberate steps in her own recollection of this event to minimize her own role in something that was manifest and clear in the video, which was that she was attempting to kill uh, the most innocent wife, the most helpless wife of her own child. Now, here's the thing. Nobody really knows whether or not a defendant has remorse. Only the defendant knows that. When you are in court, you are told by your attorneys, have a straight face, show no emotion, answer yes, no, things like that. And then after they get convicted, these judges and prosecutors say, oh, the person showed no emotion. And I would argue that people show emotion, people show regret, remorse in many different ways. And to just say that they don't have remorse, I think is being disingenuine. His father who spoke on his son's behalf. My son, my healthy, my loving and handsome baby boy, he is never going to forget the things you did. But for that, I can say that my son will be somebody one day, no matter how much he has already been through. Pretend to know what this feels like, especially from a father's perspective. Um, you, you might have wanted to keep the baby. You um, might have bitched at her about having a baby so young, and now she has a baby, and this happens, and the father is outraged. I believe the outrage is genuine. However, how are we going to fix this problem? Because it's just going to keep on going over and over, folks, unless we fix it. And I don't hear anybody coming up with any good solutions. They just want to take away Roe v. Wade. They want to make these women pump out babies. And I don't know. It doesn't seem like something that would happen in a free country to me. Vila's father spoke on her behalf, stating that she was raised in a loving family and then he hopes he can be a part of his grandson's life someday. I regret that I deprived him of having a loving and caring family. Yes, he has his dad and yes, he has his dad's family. But whenever my family and I love, we love hard and we love with everything he has. To my family, family is everything to us. My nephews and my niece are everything to myself and to my parents. Sad. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Very short one. Um, hang out. You know, as we move through this life together, we all must realize that we're in it together. Nobody is on their own. You may think you're on your own, but the human race is in this together. And all I ask is that we all be good to each other. We all slap each other on the back, give us a offer encouragement, and try to understand the people who commit these horrific acts and what their mental state says about it. You'll notice the courts don't care about your mental state. They just don't. Even if you're insane, they won't admit it because they want to lock you up. And unfortunately for this girl, man, she's going to come out ruined. Thanks for hanging out today, guys. I'll see you back here tomorrow. I am RJ Smith, and this has been what? That's right. Crazy News Reacts.